All right. Good day. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Live the Fuel show. So as a, a normal style of this show, I'm bringing on, yes, yet another guest co-host. I think I will officially never run out of guest co-hosts. It has been seven years and it has been over 400 shows. And um, I could actually thank a, a whole different connection for bringing this gentleman on today. I always say that I'm excited to podcast. That's why I'm a podcaster. But Yet again, I get to be surprised and with a different level of excitement because I've never had today's guest co-host this style of background, this unique and intriguing background. <laughs> and I'm going to giggle uh, before I let you know who he is because, again, I was not expecting to come across this author. So I will uh, give a shout out to all those podcast agencies out there that are now sending me people <laughs> instead of my first two, three years of hunting people down. Uh, but let me get a quick background because you guys are going to listen to this episode. He made his mark as an entrepreneur like me, you know, he uh, maybe a civic leader uh, when he had some free time as well. And he actually helped raise over $25 million uh, for companies and nonprofits and stuff. And as a guy who recently founded a charity in the past couple of years and wrote a book to help try and fund it, um, I get to at least connect with him on that level alone. <laughs> but that's not what we're chatting today. Part of his unique background, besides serving on multiple boards and guiding business people and business professionals and charities was he he had four books written, but the one that stood out to me, get this people, it's titled The Unlikely Felon. So there's something fun because <laughs> basically he had a knock on the door back in 2011 that changed his world forever. Uh, so podcasting and books and keynote speaking opportunities and apparently there's a movie scripts or something. I, I can't wait to talk more about him. Without further ado, Will Young, sir, welcome to the Fuel Show. Thank you so much. Thanks, Scott. Thanks for having me. You know, I got people tell me that I have an eclectic background. I'm just going to go ahead and secede to you, sir, and just say, <laughs> uh, no, because now I can tell people, oh, I got a guy to tell you about. Uh, go check out the unlikely felon. <laughs> <laughs> it's the old saying, right? Uh, try everything, but be an expert of nothing. I don't yeah, know. That's yeah. me. <laughs> yeah. And I've I've grown to embrace it. I, I, friends of mine used to call me the Scott of all trades. I've worn oh, many yeah. hats. And there's different influencers out there, coaches and people. I mean, Tree, let's just start right here on the show. Uh, this just popped in my head. There's people out there who say, you got to put in those, you know, thousand plus hours, whatever it is to become an expert in something. And, and I agree. There is that repetition and I'm, I'm a health and fitness nut. So I believe in putting in a proper amount of repetitions with certain movements and certain uh, training programs in the gym. If you want to get better at it, stronger, better form, better technique. I studied martial arts as a kid. I understood all that from a very young age. Um, but then there's people out there who say, well, you shouldn't be wearing too many hats. You got to find a focal point. <laughs> you got to find your direction in life. And so then I forced myself to do that part of my backstory and then said, well, forget about it. <laughs> right. Exactly. Firefighting background, entrepreneur. Now, I don't know. I've worn many. I've been a bartender, a bouncer, adult I, AD. Right. <laughs> and I'm only in my mid forties. So I was like, okay, I, I've, I've found that it's helped me grow, you know, Absolutely. breaking through these challenges and these unlikely next steps. Now, I, we made a joke before we hit record. I, I got to bring it up on the show now. I was like, I was like, I, I made those choices as hard as they were. <laughs> you kind of didn't. <laughs> yeah. Right, Will? It forced on me. <laughs> yeah, so 2011 was a forced year. 2011 for me was my second choice to go back and be serve a second year as a hotshot wildland firefighter. Shot, yeah. um, and so your and my 2011 were highly different. <laughs> so why don't we catch up some of the listeners right off the bat? Because it's a crazy memoir. I'm only halfway through the book. I am trying to get through it all. I respect this tie to uh, elder care and caring for our aging uh, generational differences because that's a different cultural diversity around the world too. Um, but let, let this whole jail angle thing uh, was not in your game plan. <laughs> no, I, I didn't put that on my vision board. <laughs> no, you know, I built, I built some vision boards over the years. <laughs> That idea never popped in my head. No. Yeah. But obviously behind you in a video, when people watch this on YouTube, you got failure, you got success, you have execute. So clearly these things did align eventually. <laughs> yeah. It's, at some point, I mean, it, it's funny because I think sometimes life, what, what's the old saying? Some people need to be tapped on the shoulder. Some people need to be pushed. I had to have a wrecking ball. Uh, well, I mean, my tapped on door. the shoulder is one thing. <laughs> Knock on the door and tapping you on the shoulder and sending you to jail, that's another thing. Um, yeah. Not really a nice tap on the shoulder. No, no, not at all. 
Yeah. Very, very surprising tap. Uh, you, you think it's Amazon or somebody at your door and it's right? the police. Well, nowadays so, there's so many taps in the door. You don't know who's <laughs> coming. Most people automatically yeah. assume it's Amazon because now 2023 and apparently that's a regular thing. I've, that's actually right. tried, I've tried cutting back on that actually. So less, <laughs> less Amazon taps, more supporting local and stuff like that, but that's, that's just right. Me. <laughs> um, but yeah, let's get into it, man. Um, you've been around the block. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, well, you, you've never, the funny thing is when they, they came in the house that day, um, my, my wife and I, we still joke about it to this day. I, oh, you found I, a way to joke at, about it. That's yeah, funny. exactly. Exactly. <laughs> well, no, the first couple of years it was, it was hard, but you kind of, you, you relax with it, but we joked around because we, neither one of us knew what was going on. And I looked at her, I thought, was she cheating on me with somebody? Is there, is she in the mafia that I don't know about? Is she living a double life? All these weird thoughts. She's looking at me going, are you looking at weird stuff on the internet? I mean, just right. all these thoughts. Yeah. Cause you have no idea well, nowadays, like why these people are in your house, right? Like the right. dude, the digital footprint, people with child <laughs> porn, right? Like you're saying, yeah. like they, it's, it's, they trace your laptop. Like exactly. there's all these variables, unfortunately, nowadays that can bring law enforcement to your doorstep. That's right. And and then there they are, they're handing me a, a search warrant and I'm looking at it and it deals with my grandparents. And that was, I, I'm looking at it going, what, what, what do my grandparents have to do with anything while you're here? Yeah. You're homestead. Even, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. I, told, I told them, I've been, I'm pointing in, I'm going, I'm pointing but, at them. I'm going, like, hey, on this paper, that's not my name. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is, I did. I, at first I thought it was a prank. Cause I have, I have lots of firefighter friends and police friends. And I thought it was a prank too. That That's was a twisted prank. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and I'm, and I'm thinking there's a kid around the corner. We thought that was selling drugs. Just all these things are going through your mind. The last thing you think they're there for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, also, wait, so your name had to be on the paperwork then at least, right? It was, it oh, was, okay. it, I mean, it definitely was, but you're I mean, automatically you're it's like, like uh, yeah. that's not my name. Uh, wrong <laughs> no. home. Uh, moving on. Uh, no, I'll, they, I'll tell they you where in they the right live. Place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, yeah. so, so how did your name get on that wonderful, wonderful <laughs> piece of paper? <laughs> well, we, we had taken care of my grandparents for God, 10 or 15 years. And, and we had this amazing relationship and the way I describe it is almost like a, a best friend, not a normal grandson, grandparent relationship. And even with my wife, they were, they called her granddaughter. And we just had nice. this incredible, we, we go out on the weekends and Saturday nights and Sunday nights and people would look at me and go, you're hanging out with your grandparents. That's kind of weird. I'm like, no, I we never have a had fantastic that kind of relationship. relationship. Yeah. yeah, it was. And, and, and the hard part was we started taking care of them more and more. And as most anybody who's dealt with this situation, as they age, of course, mentally and physically, they start to deteriorate and they were really healthy actually till their late eighties. I mean, they literally till about 90 That's years strong. old, really healthy. And mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they just, it started going downhill. And so we, we kept taking care of them. Um, we were using, and, and that's where this whole thing, this issue came up was we were using the estate funds to take care of them. We were also using the estate funds to take care of ourselves. Which um, is we the, legal as long as it's been documented properly. And, well, you know. and that's where we made a lot of mistakes, uh -huh. a lot of dumb things. We, we did a lot of things on uh, handshakes and some brief emails and agreements that I should have had in writing and didn't do that. It was really stupid, but at the time it, didn't seem like a big deal. Well, I could tell you, let's pause on this. Uh, I literally <laughs> thought of you this past week because I knew you were coming up and I travel a lot and I love podcast, listening to podcasts. I, I tell people all the time, there's no excuse for windshield university, uh, audio books and podcasts. Oh, I don't, I don't listen to the FM radio. No. The only time I listen to music is when my wife gets in the car and we're doing something <laughs> together. Cause then, you know, cause she has her podcast. I have my podcast. Mm -hmm. We don't listen to the mm -hmm. same podcast. So, <laughs> <laughs> she's never listened to this podcast. Uh, she's like, I hear you. I hear you enough in the house. So, <laughs> but, uh, you ever hear the famous, uh, Dave Ramsey financial? Guy? Oh, of, of course. Yes. Yeah. So twice this past week on different episodes I listened to on their podcast, because basically he's been on the radio for forever. Like ever. Yeah. And he's and him and his the Ramsey posse, as I call them, are doing great things. Oh, yeah. But this topic of generational like handoff or generational care. Mm -hmm. Wow. Like I really thought of you because I was hearing horror stories of, oh, well, we never signed that document or we never got a legal th uh, thing, the handshakes. Exactly. So I just had to connect you with that because if anybody <laughs> listens to this, ever listens to Dave Ramsey, it's more reason to keep listening to the show today because it's like, oh, this is actually more common than you think, which oh, is yeah. scary. Yeah. But, yeah. And, so and please keep going. <laughs> well, and I get emails now and people say, hey, I, I had a meeting with my my family this last weekend and I brought up your book. 
as an mm-hmm. example of why we need to do X, Y, and Z. And, and I, and that was one, another reason why I wrote the book, but it was really that all these people going through all these issues. And like when they started to deteriorate, it was too late to change the will. I mean, right. I had committed, I had made commitments and promises to them verbally that we never updated. And of course, when they're healthy in 86, you don't think in four years, it's going to be a disaster. And I'm going to, I'm going to really wish I would have put these things in writing or, but there was a will in place, right? There was, but it was outdated. It was like Dave brings up all the time. How many people don't even get the will in place, which is even scarier. I mean, but then obviously to your point, make sure it's being reviewed uh, annually as they get deeper into that older age, because to your point, right. Things are shifting. Yeah. yeah, things are shifting things. Um, we had to end up selling their home. We had to end up dealing with all kinds of different issues that weren't documented. And so I'm doing the best I can based on what I believe they wanted. Well, there were other family members who disagreed. So that became a big point of, of a problem. <laughs> yeah. Why is that? It's, I guess, I guess I'm lucky to come from a family from very little, Um, if anything, when my parents finally pass, I'll be having to pay out of pocket for whatever has to happen because Mm -hmm. of just shift, you know, I'm, I'm, what does Dave say on his show? They're trying to help people uh, change your family tree. Yeah. Yeah. I'm changing my family tree. Uh, I actually am one of the few Mulvaney's that may finally have their act together. Uh, (laughs) And that's only thanks to an amazing woman that I married who just also gave me the wake up call. Like, Oh, that's what we're supposed to be doing. Like she's way more dull than that. I was, (laughs) but it's true. It's scary, man. Like your siblings come out of the woodwork and people are worried about, well, uh, you're you're spending this to take care of them, but that could be in my inheritance and blah, blah, blah. I'm like, okay, dude, they're not even dead yet. Like, Let's, let's, let's take care of them before that, you know, yeah, keep, keep yeah. going, my friend. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's, and, and it's, um, it's, it gets so complicated so quick. And these were step relatives actually. And, and mm. we were friends, we were good friends you thought you and were. they had some changes that, well, you we thought exactly, but we had some changes. They had some changes in their life mm-hmm. where, um, one of them lost their job. The other one had mm. a health issue. And like you mentioned, why does this happen? Well, whenever money's involved, right, that becomes such a a major issue for everybody. But all of a sudden, I think they looked at us and said, well, we need to use this money now, or we we should have used it differently, or or you guys didn't do what we thought should have been done, even though I was in charge of the estate. Um, But again, were you, you were officially named as the, oh yeah, what do they call that? The estate Uh, power of attorney. Thank you. Power power of attorney. attorney. So technically- you are within your rights. I, would I am. And, and all the verbal agreements and even emails and things they had agreed to, they said, yeah, go ahead and use the money for whatever you guys need. Mm-hmm. Take, take care of yourselves, take care of the grandparents. Now, remember we're coming out of the financial crisis of 2008. So my business oh, yeah. oh, was, in was, the, a hot mess. Yeah. was in the, you know what? And I was, I was struggling to get some other businesses going. I was trying to raise money. I mean, I was, I was up against it. And then that's something I, I try to teach my kids and talk to people about is, even though those circumstances happen, you still got to make good decisions. Mm-hmm. Don't, don't find yourself compromising. And I guess what's another good word, cutting corners, whatever words yeah. you want to use, but because the the end starts justifying the mean sort of thing. And, um, and so, and a lot of people I, have unfortunately gone down those paths and those are the ones you find out are going to jail or are all of a sudden have criminal records or destroying families, their own, uh, either others or their own. Right. It's exactly. it is very scary. Well, and we had a couple other things. If, if you would talk about bad luck, which I don't, I don't believe anybody's a victim. I believe you're, you're responsible for everything that happens, but Ooh, that's we fine. Could you say that one more time, <laughs> please? Uh, that we're cause... responsible for everything that happens in our life. Thank yeah, you. Uh, I recently <laughs> used a quote that I learned years ago from a, from a corporation I worked for. You ever hear of T-Mobile? Um, oh, of course. Oh, I was a coach with them. I became an analyst with them, but one of their, it was either a missions or a value statement I use on the show all the time because I, it stuck with me. We are all personally and collectively accountable for our results. And obviously that was meant to build teamwork within the Mm -hmm. company, but I've applied that to my personal life. Like we are all personally accountable for our results. If you just take yourself out of it and be selfish, that's right, bro. Don't pass the buck. Own your, oh, if you will, own your shit. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. So it's, that's it. And the thing was that we were in a county that was, had this uh, DAs and, and people who were up for election and their big thing was elderly abuse and elderly um, criminal issues. And so they literally, they tried to make our case like we were running around the neighborhood 
stealing from old people. I mean, we were the lead story on the five o'clock news when we were eventually arrested because after the search, they did an 18 month investigation. They went okay. around and talked to everybody I knew. They trying to find that I was Bernie Madoff. I mean, they were doing yeah. all these weird things, but it was because of this County. And it, it was all about, we can use this couple as an example. If we can get Your them, it's going to scare everybody else. Yeah. To, to not do anything with the elderly, whether that's whether you're taking care of them or they're your neighbor or whatever the situation. So I don't, this is why I, I, I don't get into politics and religion on this show. Cause they're just too, <laughs> oh, come on. No. It's exhausting, <laughs> but for God's sakes, I mean, yeah, you can see the writing on the wall. Like, Oh, this is political ammo, man. Let's load up the magazine. And depending on, I don't care whose party you're part of. I'm like, can you all just come together and be realistic? Like why, what happened to, you know, innocent until proven guilty. Right. Absolutely. Dude, maybe Will and his wife are decent people just trying to take care of the family. Okay, yeah, they screwed up a couple steps here and there, but you go right for the up, oh, they got to be criminals. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that that was uh, and, and somebody had told me, well, you should go to trial. And and as as you read the book, I, I go through the whole process, but we're, we were looking to go to trial and we were we felt we were innocent of what we were being charged. We were charged with one um, one count of theft. Okay. Uh, they, they tried to, you know, they try to go around, they try to trump up all the charges. They try to find if you've done anything. So if you were growing marijuana in your basement or you're, mm -hmm. you're doing whatever you're doing, they're, they're trying to figure it out because if they can come up with a hundred different charges and then negotiate down, but anyway, the, but my point is, and I said, yeah, I, I believe we should go to trial, but then there's, there's another issue there. If you go to trial and lose, you are penalized significantly. Mm -hmm. So I would have had probably three to five years in prison. My wife would have had a couple of years scary. in prison. We had two kids at the time. We now have three kids, but um, you're evaluating all these things and the cost trials. I know we see all the stars on TV and people there in these trials uh, that are eight weeks long and they're spending millions of dollars, but for the average guy who doesn't have millions of dollars, it's still significant what that costs. And so anyways, we were, we were trying to evaluate all those things against what this was going to mean for us in the long term. Well, so obviously you had to laugh at first, but then obviously got serious <laughs> right away. And then obviously this totally brought you and your wife probably even tighter together than you already were. I mean, obviously you already family got two kids, eventually had three kids. So, I mean, the relationship building process definitely amplified, I, I guess, throughout all of that. Um, <laughs> besides, you, I mean, your marriage I was, could get through that. Get through I was anything. gonna say, I mean, <laughs> that, you got, was, wait, is one of your books on marriage and love? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the next one, no. right? Uh, I mean, I'm not kidding. I mean, that's that's impressive. I yeah. mean, because they discuss. Well, actually, I hate to keep quoting Ramsey, but I mean, I'm sure you probably talked to people about this too. Like, money is one of the biggest downfalls in a relationship. Not being on the same page. One person building debt or having debt like me, I, I've, I've been honest since the beginning, like I had debt and I had to wipe it all out. My wife was brought up never to have debt. Like there was two polarizing different fronts mm -hmm. and uh, without all of that, I mean, and then worrying about the cost of legal fees and dragging this out like you're discussing and then God, whether or not to go to trial or not. And it's like, where's this money going to come from? Like, are you, are you bankrupting your, your family? Um, it's that's that's stressful. Very well, stressful. and the reality is we had broken that we had broken some laws based on what we had done, but not on purpose, not no. intentionally. One of the things I was doing a talk a couple of weeks ago, I, I come, came out with this analogy. What I felt like is that I walked into a room, saw my friend stabbed, laying on the ground. I walked over and went picked up the knife and oh. went, what's happening here don't pick up the knife the police Will. came in and yeah exactly exactly and the police came in and went oh you did it and i went oh no 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 i just i walked in i i, I saw check my around. friend that's what it felt like and yeah. that's that whole thing of going to trial too we had some really good defense attorneys and they said listen the media is there everybody's there they're going to use you as an example if you lose they're going to they're going to destroy you they're going to do everything they can because everybody's there everybody's watching so What's one of the what's one of the top things that you took away from? I mean, the thing you the, the, the law, for example, like one of those. What was one of the biggest mistakes that you could pass on to uh, myself and my fellow <laughs> listeners? Is like, okay, don't do that. I mean, well, besides obviously updating the will and making sure everything's very clear, and before they lose their their mental you know awareness and capabilities, which does fall back to them as a responsibility. Um, but I mean, again, I hear people talk about that all the time. They're like, well, yeah, but make sure you're also coaching them through that. Like, hey, make sure we're clear. I mean, I don't want to get 
I don't want to go to jail. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I want to help you. I want to take care of your estate, but I also don't want to crash and burn my own family in the process. So. Well, I think everybody's the number number one thing is anybody involved. And I don't, and I mean, anybody step relatives, uncles, aunts, brothers, cousins, friend down the street should all be involved in all the decisions. Okay. So they should either, um, either okay it in writing in a group meeting so that there's witnesses that can say, yeah, I yeah. saw the, all 10 of us agreed with what will was doing yeah. or whatever it was. I mean, uh, other than what you said, the wills and signed agreements and all that stuff. Yeah. The other thing too, is just don't, don't pay yourself to ah. take care of your, your relatives. Okay. I mean, and there's a lot of different philosophies on that. And I, I until this all happened, I would, I would have never compensated my family for taking care of them. We were just in a very unique financial situation coming out of 08 and 09. Mm -hmm. And we felt like we needed to use the money to survive, to keep our life moving forward, our goals moving forward. Again, looking back, not a good move, but at the time it goes back to that kind of desperation. But that had been documented to make it mm -hmm. legal ahead of time. Exactly. Like, so exactly. your the parents could have said, Hey, if we go so far down the health pike in a negative way, uh, to save money and to appreciate, to thank my, my, my next generation for caring mm -hmm. for us, you could pay yourself this much per hour, blah, 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 blah. And then, and then once we reach the point where we need in-home like nursing care, then obviously that gets passed off. If there's, if there's enough money in the estate and all that, like, obviously this can technically be made legal, right? Oh, absolutely. Okay. But it has to be done before they uh, deteriorate before yeah. they, I mean, look at the numbers of dementia, and Alzheimer's mm -hmm. we have going on all, and New York, a health guy, and that gets into all kinds of health issues, I think, but all, all of those things happening are really feeding into this conversation because it has to be done before you can't put somebody on the stand or have them agree to a contract. If they're not mentally there, okay. it just, it's never going to, that's never going to work. So then What's the second biggest? So, uh, yeah, no, because <laughs> well, that's already big enough. I'm like, I'm good. <laughs> All right, yeah, we got we got to have a serious talk, uh, mom, it, dad. Yeah. Well, I think even I look at it personally it, when I think about what happened. Um, I I think about what's ten years ago now. Was it ten years ago? Yeah, two months 10. ago. Yeah. And at the time, it well, it took me the first few years, like you said, I didn't laugh about. It. I can laugh about it now, yeah. but and I actually when I look at it, it's the best thing that ever happened to me. And that's oh, weird. let's pause on that stuff. Tell you why? Yeah. Yeah. Well, because coming up to it, like I mentioned, you know, I, was, I don't think I was making good decisions because I had this whole desire to be rich, to be successful, everything that you're, I guess, taught and you're pushed and mm -hmm. in our society to do, which I'm fine with. But I was, again, to that point of almost not always breaking the rules, but bending them, yeah. um, putting myself and my family in situations that just were too risky. And I think when that drive, you're you want it so badly. You're willing to do anything. I mean, I, I've, I was reading the books and listening mm -hmm. to the audio tapes for all you that there used to be audio tape. I'm kidding. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah I'm with you. I'm tapes. with you. I've been, yeah, I've been we're, in we're personal the personal development younger, right? for a while. But, so, but, yeah. but it was, and those are good things, but it became almost obsessive. And then you find yourself in this financial crisis. You're making bad decisions. Here's the reality. I'm such a better father, better husband, better friend, better brother, better everything because that happened to me. And I don't know when I look back, if I even, I'd probably be divorced. I might be dead. Mm. Who knows if it didn't happen again, that's easy to say now at the time, <laughs> sure the hell wasn't easy to say no. now it's like, wow, that was incredible. I'm, I've coached all my kids sports the last 10 years. I probably would have never done that. I spend every morning with my wife having coffee and um, just we, we do date nights every month. We, we just do things that I don't think we were doing until this happened. And so as I you look feel like back, maybe you're on autopilot before. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I, just, I, th I think we can all learn from that. Not aware, you know, that awareness, that, that conscious awareness of who's in your life, gratitude. And, and I had, I would say gratitude, but there's such a difference between saying it and writing it down and actually feeling it and saying, mm -hmm. you know what? I have a great life today. I got, I got great relationships. I've got all this good stuff, but I'm really reminded feeling of that. It. The gratitude thing it. is big. You talk to, well, you listen, whatever, whatever people are doing, audio books, podcasts, whatever <laughs> you're into the personal professional development, the growth. Um, hopefully everyone's at a different phase of that ladder of ascension because it does help you grow. It's helped me exponentially. Um, I think it is important to remind like it is very easy to fall into an autopilot life 
and then forget or ignore these significant wins that may have already happened along that journey. And then you're not actually pausing to show gratitude for that. And there is a pause. You have to pause. That's something I've had to learn the past few years as well. I mean, I've only been married. Actually, we just had my, uh, we just had our four-year wedding anniversary on St. Patrick's oh, Day. Oh, congratulations. Uh, we're, we're late bloomers, I like to joke around. <laughs> uh, but then I just realized like, wow, we've been together almost 10 years. And I was like, oh, and for me, that's a big deal because before I was never with somebody longer than a year. So, and I was a bachelor a long time and oh, yeah. it was just, yeah, I just wasn't ready to commit to any of that stuff. And yeah, there's a lot to be grateful for. Like our new house we have now, I have land, I have, we have a new puppy. I mean, all these things. And it's like, okay, let's pause. Let's show gratitude yeah. for that. It's a shame that it's for some of us, like you guys, I appreciate your honesty on that. It took a massively scary thing. <laughs> Yeah. Like yeah. the knock on the door. Exactly. To, to trigger this. And then how long did it go on for? Probably like two years at least of, of hell. Uh, oh yeah. 18, yeah, it was 18 month investigation. Yeah. So I, I didn't yeah. sleep for 18 months. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's yeah awesome. Healthy <laughs> sleep is kind of important for healthy wellness. You know? I, I've just, I've had sleep experts on the show. Maybe what you went through might not, I don't think yeah, a sleep, little, I don't think a sleep expert's going to be able to help overcome that. Um, yeah, a little PTSD there, but yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. I, and I, I write about it in the book. I, I talk about Shawshank Redemption. If you, it's mm. my favorite movie. And if you, anybody out there, if you've seen it, yeah. um, you've got Andy and red, he's these great characters. And there's a part where Andy says, you know, get busy living or get busy dying. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and the quote, here's why it was so important to me because literally when all this was going down and I, I remember the night before we went to um, the sentencing, and I literally was going to kill myself. I'll be totally honest here. I, I was going to commit suicide because I was so embarrassed over losing my reputation. I mean, I was going to run for mayor of Denver. I mean, let's crazy. Uh, wild. give a little bit more context on this. And not that I was, I was, I'm nobody special. I'm an average guy, but I thought I could make a difference. So I had started to put a campaign together. I'd started a political consulting company a year before that. Anyways, that's how bad I felt. My, even though I had an incredible wife, incredible family, incredible friends. That's where I was at. And, and thank God I didn't do it. I found a way not to do it. Obviously, and that next yes, day I had, to, I had to, well, and I had to face, face uh, the reality of that next day to go into that court and be sentenced. And like I said, it's the best thing ever happened to me. But at that time, you're, you're thinking about getting busy dying versus getting busy living. Well, then there's something to be said about us owning our crap and facing your demons, whether or not it was intentional crap or not. Right. But exactly. uh, that's what I'm getting out of that honesty right there is that it's going to hurt. A yeah. lot of things hurt. That's where the biggest growth opportunities come from. Like I talked that's about right. that in my book. When my was I barely made it to one year of dating and my wife, well, now wife, she broke up with me because my head was so far up my butt and I was so closed <laughs> off romantically and emotionally after all the firefighting and just not being happy with what I had already in life right in front of me. And it took that, that one breakup to finally like flip the proverbial switch inside of my heart, my head. And it, it was life-changing. Um, yeah. I, I had to face the music and, or go back after her and try and win her back in the next night, you know, three months. But, you know, it was it was a fun adventure. It's still, well, I was glad I'll, my wife my yeah. wife was patient with me because we've been married almost 28 years. Got me beat there. The, yeah. the first 20 were pro probably a living hell for her because <laughs> I just I was I was not the guy that I was supposed to be. I was playing mm. this character in a movie that was just going off the rails. And, you know, that's so thank God she was patient. I always say that. And I tell other guys, too, sometimes you don't really mature till your mid 40s, I think, right. early 40s. You know, Well, so. and that's what like over the next three months of that breakup, that's what I did. Like I had gone back to school already before firefighting, did another uh, degree in uh, marketing and psychology and psychology stuck with me. And I was mm. like, wait a minute. I could figure this out. I could figure my problems out. <laughs> and I took all the personal and professional development and switched it into romantic research and trying to figure myself wow. out what was wrong. And it, what well, it worked. I mean, there was a lot of audio tapes and books and stuff that I was tracking down in videos and then you know, hiring, you know, romance coaches that, or psychologists to talk more about what was my deal. And yeah. And I was like, okay, I'm trying to chase things instead of just absolutely embracing it, the process and earning the process. I want like, just like you said earlier, I wanted the big job title and the salary and all these things. And yeah. 
it took firefighting to at least ground that, but then in the process of that, shut down other things like the heart, emotion, romance, stuff like that, then becoming the tough guy and all these things. It's like, and then I found out one of the biggest lessons from all of that was, oh, if you're willing to show vulnerability in life, it's yes. probably one of the most attractive traits a man can do. That's right. And I was like, really? Huh. Well, I screwed that up. <laughs> no, I was the same way. You know, a the you know the a personality, the yep. the big dog in the room, the yep. whole stereotypical, you name it. I mean, it was. Uh, uh, I was crazy. following the wrong uh, influencers, if you will, back mm -hmm. then, thinking that you know, absolutely. Uh, what did I say? What, what's the old quote that I I actually used to follow that? Uh, Fake it till you make it. Yes. Oh gosh, yes. I, will, I used to uh, say that all the time. Oh my god, man! <laughs> I was like, what were we thinking, man? Oh, yeah, Come on, Will. I oh. You just want to go back and smack yourself. You're like, how dare you say that? Oh, yeah, um, exactly. <laughs> and I, I think there was some well-meaning behind that quote in the self-development world. I think it just went too far the wrong direction. What they mean yeah. there is sometimes you got to flip your mindset into that next step. You got to exactly. envision yourself already there. So what's it going to take to get there? There's ways to interpret that in the right way, uh, mm -hmm. but not like walk around like you, your crap doesn't stink and go buy a vehicle that you can't afford exactly. and all these things. you know. And you become it, somebody that's not you. You're, yeah. you're this actor. It's not you. And then you're thankful years later because you still don't understand how you kept your wife for 20 years and, and then built <laughs> exactly. a family. And you're like, man, that woman is patient. <laughs> she has a place in heaven let's see it let's right? that way. a special place <laughs> and and so obviously was it more you and her or was it really more you than her being drugged through the mud on this it's really no it's both you. of us it okay. was both of us and that I, made it I, even worse I, again i'm only halfway through the book but yeah. i was like was it both reputations being destroyed and just yeah. again because yeah. you're married so by by yep. fault by default you're both responsible so exactly yeah. Oh, and we that's... had to have two different attorneys. You can't have one attorney represent you. So you have to have two separate attorneys uh, and, twice and it bill. just, yeah, exactly. And it just became this odyssey of just, and I felt like every day I was getting up and having an out of body experience because it was so I'm not my, my life of crime up to this was I had a speeding, some speeding tickets. I had an open container when I was like 19 years old in college. Yeah. That was it. Yep. So here I was caught in this thing and, and thank God she, I mean, she's just an angel. And to this day, she's, she has incredible friends. She's an incredible person. And thank God, cause if she wasn't, she would have left me in a heartbeat overall. You know, so fast forward, it's obviously over 11 years later or 12, it's 12, 12 now it's 2023. So 12 is it almost 12 years? I don't know. 12 years. Yeah. yeah. And uh, <laughs> wow. Time flies. Um, is, is there still remnants? I mean, oh, yeah. over all this much time, I'm just wondering from a lot from a, a, a timeline of recovery. Uh, have you fully rebuilt the name? You know, no. her name, your name. Uh, no. Yeah. I was going to say, is this, it's got to still linger, right? No. In fact, there are, there are contacts or I used to call them friends, but maybe we weren't friends. It's funny. You find out who your real friends are, but mm. um, there are people that still to this day won't talk to me. They won't have anything to do with me. Even though I you won the case. Even and, though, you know, even though we, well, we, you know, we ended up pleading guilty and, and well, I mean, out of that, thing. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, but, yeah. um, but like, yeah, please they, go they, read my book. <laughs> maybe, maybe they'll become friends again. Yeah, yeah. No, but you know what I'm saying? It's like, yeah. I, I see people and they, they have all these friends and I'm like, do you really though? Yeah. Because they're, they're, they will not. And these are people that I got jobs for. I helped start their business. I, I did a lot of things for mm. people and in the community and not that I was owed anything. I just, it was weird to see. And even the ones that I thought never would stand by me, stood by me. And some of the ones that I thought would never go away, went away. And so yeah. that, that, I don't think you ever get over that. In fact, I was just thinking about this weekend. You, you never get over it. You no, know, I, I just had that conversation with my nephew the other day, cause he's a very, very smart kid. And, uh, way smarter than I am, I think, in many ways. And so I'm proud of him as an uncle. But I always remind him, like, be careful who you surround yourself with. Mm -hmm. He's he's 21 now, but I mean, he's 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 got a free ride from the Air Force. He earned that through oh, his nice. Boy Scout history and nice. some kind of high school Air Force program. So they're paying his way through college. He's wow. majoring in chemistry. He, he really wanted biochem. I'm wow, like, okay, a you're a little kid. smart. <laughs> yeah, I was like, all right. Uh, but he doesn't have a ton of friends. And I said, you're yeah. fine. You'll, you'll make them along yeah. the way. Yeah. I said... I, myself over the years, uh, it was funny. Like when my wife broke up with me, a lot of my closest friends I have to this day kept her 
like during oh, that three month breakup. And I was like, hey, hey, we just broke up. Like, yeah, yeah, but she's cool. And I was like, Why is we don't really on? like you. Know? <laughs> I was like, oh, 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 hey, wait a minute. We, I was first. And I was like, and that, that was a wake up call. I was like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm screwing up. Uh, but no, in the business world too, when I left to go be a firefighter, people were like, what do you think you're doing? Oh, I bet. Like you, you, you yeah. finally, you, you have your pedigree, you have your, your, your LinkedIn profile, your resume looks great. And I said, I don't know. It's, it's calling to me. I was like, mm -hmm. if, if that's meant to be my career, I'll go spend a couple of years. If I decide I got it out of my system, which I did, I was like, I'll come back and we'll see where it goes. I was like, but see, that's young. courageous. I mean, that's people need to hear your story all the time because so many people are sitting there. They're in a dead end job. I hated my dead end life, dead end relationship. You know what I'm saying? And they see you going yeah. and you made this huge change to do something like that. Do you know when people want to do that every day? Probably 96.9% of the people. And I was, <laughs> I was, I had put it off for a while because I was already as an adult student the nights and weekends, you know, banging out classes as a, you know, I was in my career quote quote career at the time and then it's like oh i gotta get another, this piece of paper that'll take my blah 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 to the next level and all this stuff and then i was like you know once i figured out i wanted to do the fire i was like no you should get you're gonna close that chapter let's finish those last couple of classes out you know take the hit get it done get that degree get the piece of paper because then you can't say you didn't do it you know, or didn't finish it and then when you go out there it is there's nothing holding you back right i was in no relationships exactly. i had i had paid off most of my bills the the school was done i was like let's go and I did. So it took me a few years to suck it up for a little bit, but I never lost that vision. And then I went for it and I fulfilled it. And yes, it did change my life forever. That's why I wrote the book. That's why I started a charity too. I was like, wait a minute. I was like, even if I only sell a few books, it's like, if I can get through to a couple of people and say, just take some risks, maybe not one of the most dangerous jobs in the world, but you could do other risks. I mean, you mentioned Denver. I used to live in Littleton, by the way, oh, um, yeah. or actually, uh, and, and uh, Golden. Mm -hmm. So I love Colorado. Uh, that the but going out west and experiencing pretty much most of our country on the government dime, aka mine and your tax dollars, was fun. <laughs> it was scary. It was dangerous. How long did you do it for? How long? Only, only two that? years. Only what two was years. It? Okay. Yeah. I put that in my wow. book. I was like, I feel bad. Like, I, I actually that was the other, like the imposter, you know, imposter syndrome. It's like, who am I to write a book about yeah. serving as uh, as one of the elite hotshot wildland firefighters? And I only did it for two years, but I, I mm. put, I made sure I put that in the book. I said, you know, I'm doing this to honor those who continue to serve uh, because a lot of people had no clue, including me back in the day. I was like, there was nothing written about it. There was no movies yet. Nobody knew what hot sh people automatically hear hot shots. Like, Oh, you're those people who jump out of the plane. I'm like, no, no, <laughs> those are smoke jumpers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no, that's granted, right. I thought smoke, that too. That yeah, was my first yeah. thought too. Smoke jumpers and hot shots are the two type one incident response levels. This is the elite of the elite. And then there's type two crews, which are all like hell attack and regular wildland firefighters mm -hmm. with engines and stuff like that. Oh uh, no, we were the ones who just had to hike up the mountain and then the smoke jumpers, they would <laughs> skydive in remote and then we would meet up, you know, it was that type oh, of yeah. relationship. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. you're, you're designed to, you're trained and designed to you know, if you have to, they'll have you out there camping for three, four days. They'll just they'll, uh, long line in a uh, cargo net of, of literally buck, five gallon buckets of food from the fire camp with a helicopter. Oh, wow. That, you know, wow. it was a great experience. <laughs> you don't shower, <laughs> you don't shower for two weeks. Shower for, I was yeah. going to say for two weeks. Yeah. People are like, you left your cubicle for that? I'm like, <laughs> I was like, you know what? You're damn right I did. Yeah. That's, because that's, you that's never That's pretty know. exciting to me. Yeah. And so, scary, but. <laughs> yeah. I mean, the only one side effect is my, the love of my life will not let me grow back my firefighter beard. I had an epic, oh, like, nice. mountain man beard. Like, you know, oh. you're dirty all the time. I'm like, why even shave anymore? And you just let it go for months it was oh, awesome she saw the fantastic. photos and she's like no she's like no that's out <laughs> she's like you get some scruff maybe two to three days of growth and that's where we're at and i said okay i'll take i'll take the win you know it's that would be great i can't grow a beard at all like yeah. i can't do it i'm, I'm an old man and i still can't <laughs> well, grow a beard. i barely anyway. could because <laughs> when i did that i was 31 and 32 and <laughs> i barely could at the beginning but it's and it's amazing once you just stop and your body will eventually figure it out and all of a sudden it filled in really nice and I was like oh yeah there we go uh, no, and then you get no more of that up. no <laughs> so but I can't yeah. risk taking yeah you didn't plan on being a risk taker you didn't did you plan on writing a book about it no I mean no. you're probably embarrassed back then right yeah it would in fact I'll tell you how I how, here's how I wrote the book. I I was having a conversation with a good friend of mine very successful in the financial industry. And I said to him, Hey, can I help you do different, you know, ABC, this and that, and help you with this project and that. And, and he was going to, and then his partner calls me, mm -hmm. uh, 
couple days later and says, listen, listen, Will, you're a great guy. We love you, but we can't have you connected to this business any way, shape, or form because yeah. you're a you're a felon. And uh, I just, I literally, I just remember I was looking out my back, my back door and uh, in my backyard. And I just, that sinking feeling my stomach going to my throat, like, oh man, what am I going to do? And my, I went to my wife and said, I'm going to write a book about this. Mm -hmm. She goes, you should. And I go, I'm going to write it for two reasons. I'm going to write it because the kids need to know when they grow up, what the true story of what happened to us are, what our facts are. And for all the people out there that are going to find themselves either taking care of mom and dad, grandma, grandpa, uh, whoever it might be, or burned out entrepreneurs who've, maybe they are suicidal. Maybe they're at the end of the road. Maybe they'll find this book and say, wait a minute, if this guy can, can come back from this stupid, <laughs> some of the yeah. stupid things he did, maybe I can too. Maybe I can figure this out. So that's, that's why I wrote the book. I think it was a smart move because I don't have a legal background. I'm not here to say whether you were guilty or innocent. Exactly. I love the fact that you're honest. He's like, yeah, we definitely screwed up and we definitely didn't do some things that were within the legal process. And that's why we got nailed. And then yep. you stepped up and you owned it because you want to protect your family and not get drugged through a massive trial of hell. I mean, yeah. well, um, we could have probably won a trial and our, our defense attorney, he'd been 35 year. In fact, I think he's retired now, but um, he had been through, he had defended murderers and, and well-known mm -hmm. celebrities in the Colorado area. And he said, listen, Bill, he said, it's a fifth, this is a 50, 50 deal. So it's scary, you know, because what jury are you going to get that day? How is the judge going to react? How is the judge going to react when all that media is sitting there when they're tied to this? I mean, it's, do you want to do it on a coin flip? And I was like, Whoa. And especially with, I didn't want to take one hell of a consultation me. session. Um, <laughs> yeah. But real, but yeah. it was real and it was authentic and he knew the system wow. and, he, and he knew he was like, here's the deal. It's kind of hard to ignore that since you hired him to be your counsel. <laughs> yeah. I mean, talk about five years experience, me zero experience. Yeah. Know? That's a big punch <laughs> in the gut. Well, I mean, uh, I don't know, man. I can feel my gut like caving in. Like I was, I'm trying to picture myself sitting there that day or I was like, Ooh, well, I was man. that guy that always said, uh, if you're innocent, you'd go to trial. Yeah. yeah. 100 million percent of the time. Well, that obviously changed every view. I had no idea how the system is set up and that, that's another conversation with us, but this, luckily we, we were able to get good attorneys. What about the people who can't? So anyways, uh, yeah. like I said, that's another conversation, but I got to see that part of the system. And what was your end result from that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a, it's, it's a nightmare and, and it needs to be fixed in so many ways, but um, that's going to take money. Time, you know, I was resources. just having a similar conversation <laughs> last week. I was in a business meeting and uh, my biggest uh, industry that I impact in sales and marketing world is the HVAC industry, right? We, everything oh, we take cool. for granted okay. here in this country, heating, air conditioning, your indoor mm -hmm. comfort. Uh, but I, I meet with all these CEOs and it's all business to business type of stuff. And it was funny because like now the state of New Jersey has made marijuana legal. Like I'm bringing mm. it up because you're in Colorado oh, yeah, <laughs> and, and, and then, marijuana and then New York, world. right. And <laughs> yes. then Pennsylvania, but each state has their own laws. Like I live in Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but that's different than Jersey. And then they're different than yep. New York and yada, yada. But then there were smart business players who said, all right, I'm going to build warehouses and grow tomatoes. So, and then the facilities ready to go. So once they legalize, ah. they can just flip the switch and convert these facilities into, you know, government approved grow houses. And it was just all legal. And it all you all you need all that technology, right? Proper oh, moisture balancing yep. and UV lights and all this stuff. Well, one of the execs I was meeting with last week up in Staten Island, he goes, "Yeah, it's funny." He goes, "My brother is in that industry." I'm like, "Oh yeah, where at?" He goes, "California." I'm like, "Oh, there's a surprise." <laughs> and I was like, "Yeah, but your entire family's history is is like this massive distribution company that he is a buyer for. He's like one of the top buyers, mm -hmm. and his whole family founded the company." And I said, "Why is he not in that?" He's like, "Well, he decided to go do that." And I said, well, so why is it funny? He said, well, he's got a criminal record because mm. of marijuana. I said, okay. Oh, yes. And he said, well, here's the funny thing. He just got approved to come back to New Jersey and set up a second operation here yeah. because he has experience. <laughs> and I was like, exactly. this is the first time I've heard this. I was like, oh, I'm sorry, hold on. 
he applied <laughs> to put a second grow house now on the East Coast, back in New Jersey, where you're from. He said, like, yeah, but he's not sure if he's going to do it. I was like, eh, that, that's not what I care about. I was like, the state of New Jersey knew, knows that he had a criminal record being arrested for possession of marijuana mm-hmm. and knows that he runs a business in California growing it. So they welcomed him back <laughs> to do a business here with a criminal background. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah. I was like, so since they legalized it, does that mean our legal system then clears his record? And he's like, no, probably not. <laughs> <laughs> probably not. That, I just had to bring that up right yeah. now. I was like, yeah, exactly. I don't get it. That's exactly right. Well, hey, and because they're making money back, off it. <laughs> make money and pay yeah. us tax dollars to support exactly. our new thing. But we're yeah. not going to clear your record. But hey, good job for having a criminal record because now we can approve you faster than other people because we know you have that's right quote quote <laughs> career experience experience. <laughs> well, and I'm like, that's okay. how we're, well work release. So I did work release for 85 days. Okay, I didn't know what the heck work release was. Okay, but basically you pay to be in jail. So here's how it works, at least in in Colorado, they they charge you based on what you make which can be anywhere from, uh, now it's probably different now, but 14 bucks a day to $70 a day, okay? Oh, okay? And work release, you stay there at night and then you go to your job. Or for me, I, I got to go home because I have a home-based business, which thank God, that was fantastic. I but I had to stay there on the weekends and on the evenings. And then I paid a fee per day to participate in this program. Now, obviously their, their goal is they're not letting total crazies who've hurt okay. people out in the streets, but- you know, if you, if you don't have, if you're not a violent person, they let you in this program, but you're paying to be in this program. But, <laughs> well, hold on. I'm confused. <laughs> exactly. so, it, fun, funny thing. I mean, so I had ex cons on my fire crew. I had no idea okay. on the East coast. If you are a good boy or girl in jail, they let you get, um, you can earn a role to get in the vans and they drive you out and you go pick up litter along the highway, right? Oh, you're, yeah. you're doing yeah, of course. whatever, uh, work release or, but you're still in jail. Um, and oh, yeah. then out West, yeah. they build entire wildland firefighting crews as con crews and oh, you can go fight fire. That. Interesting. So oh. three guys that I served with, they had already you know, went to jail. They had a criminal background because of, uh, Arizona's famous for meth. And mm-hmm. they were oh, either yeah. dealing it, buying it, or using it, whatever. I I, I learned so much from them. <laughs> um, but they got to serve on con crews, which actually ended up building them a resume and helping them find their future career path. So it's funny how they had to go do something hard, right? Full circle back to earlier in yep. the show. We mm-hmm. have to go through hard things sometimes to find the next amazing step in life. And you don't realize yep. it. But the crazy thing was, I was like, so did you guys get paid for that? Like, yeah, the normal, like, con wage and it goes into your like your account which is like pennies oh yeah dollar. yeah exactly so like, all right so so you're risking your life as a prisoner he's like yeah but it, it got me in the outdoors so i didn't care exactly but i was like okay so <laughs> all right you're serving time and you're risking your life and you get paid the same amount of somebody picking up litter okay yep doesn't make yeah, sense that's, that's it no it doesn't yeah. It yeah. So uh-huh. yeah, but I think I was paying, it came out to like $2,000 a month. It was 85 days. So, now, so almost that counts months. as that counts as public service or no, it just, it, 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 it's just the way they're set up to where they're getting fees. We had, I had 200 guys in my pod probably, and they were paying anywhere from that $14 all the way up. And so I don't, if you run the numbers, I don't know what they're getting, but you're basically paying for probably your food. I, I don't know what you're, you're paying for a lot of the expenses of being in there. Okay. So I, I, yeah, it was very odd. I had, but no you were idea, home, but, but I got to come home during the days and they, they actually fought me on that. And they were like, listen, you got to go get a job. And I was like, listen, I had, I I've been a an business. entrepreneur business guy forever. What, what where am I going to go work? What, what do you mean? Like, I'm going to go to, to home Depot and start I mean, it was the most bizarre thing. And so, but then they, they, they relaxed and they said, well, listen, then you got to pay the max. That was kind of the way they, they got around it was you pay the max per day so that you can quote, have this privilege to be able to work from your house. Uh, uh-huh. and so I did it. It was supposed to be six months, but I had good time. So okay. you know, I was a good boy. Um, I had no idea what good time was. It's kind of it, like buying your own work release. <laughs> exactly. I'm yeah. just trying to connect. I'm like, yeah, it's, it's, bizarre. and I don't know if other states like Pennsylvania, I don't know if it's like that, but that's I'm how Colorado I mean, is. I don't want to find out. I mean, but <laughs> yeah, don't, don't I, do that. <laughs> 
<laughs> I mean, again, I'm already halfway through your book and I'm like, I am totally contacting the parents and making sure that the will is very, very yes, clear. Get the and, will done. <laughs> uh, luckily I do make more than my family, so I don't need to pay myself, but again, lessons are learned from your book. So, absolutely. <laughs> uh, and again, it's scary because, oh man, I got to get this book from my uh, a good friend of ours. My wife ski race coaches with her and her, and their free time on the weekends. Uh, her mother has lived with MS uh, for years. Oh, and now, so the family was, and, and her mother went through a divorce and then the father was still paying, her father was still paying for the house uh, because he felt bad. His ex-wife is you oh, know, sure. literally MS. I mean, sure. so she had in-care nursing coming and going. I mean, she's in the wheelchair, everything. She's pretty far along. But now, uh, so the father as a wedding gift, because she got married uh, a year mm -hmm. and a half ago, uh, friends of ours. So the house is now in the daughter's name. And then mom is still there, uh, oh, yeah. still being cared for. But now they're in this process of transitioning, saying, well, listen, we love you, but like your care is getting so advanced that, and we, we want to have a life. I think they came to an agreement, obviously, and mom mm -hmm. is going to be transitioned into a care facility and mm -hmm. then they'll have the whole house to themselves. But I'm like, uh, is that documented? Like I, I'm granted. I mean, the house wasn't in her mother's name. It was fine, but I'm like, I hope all this stuff is documented. It just makes me, yeah. just, it's scary. Well, right? and assisted living doesn't even, when we, when we put them both in assisted living, it just made a lot of our challenges even worse because mm. you still have to get them to the doctors. You still have to make sure their food, yeah. their clothes. I mean, people think, well, we just put them away. It no, you got to pay like that too. That. You, you got to pay for it. You got to be involved in it or, or find somebody or pay somebody to be involved in it. So it's, yeah. They, they well, that's been so their struggle. Issues. They, the, the nurse yeah. what, for what they could afford the family and her mother's estate can afford the nursing people that were coming in there were crap. She, oh, yeah. a couple of years ago, one was stealing mm -hmm. uh, a couple of years ago, one convinced her to give her the checkbook and then she'd go buy things like groceries mm -hmm. and stuff. And then she was buying it. It was all this it happens horror. all the time. Yeah. And yep. it's, and then they said, listen, it's like, it's just, it's exhausting. And I know they never paid themselves. Uh, mm -hmm. but I mean, but again, reading your book, I was like, oh yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that unless it's been well documented. <laughs> so that's right. Yeah. I mean, every, I mean, again, they're just trying to care for her mom. And luckily, yeah. you know, her, her now husband, he's the, the head of a nursing department at the major hospital. So he's oh, got he great knows. background yeah. and, you know, he's trying to be a loving husband, you know, as a newlyweds and trying to be there for her. So it's, it's been a very interesting transition for them. And, yeah. um, but yeah, I mean, everything from caregivers to are your family law practices up to speed on all this <laughs> stuff? Do they know how to make sure all this is duck, your ducks are in a row? I mean, heck you were the, uh, head of the estate, but I'm like, Maybe it should be a third party attorney or something. Exactly. Yeah. yeah? I, yeah. I tell people all the time. It's like, what if, if in doubt, just have the attorney get yeah. involved with it and let them, I mean, it's going to cost you extra money, but what well, do you want to do? Luckily, Go to jail, lose your reputation yeah. or <laughs> you know? my, my wife's one of my wife's oldest girlfriends finally went back and finished her legal degree and she's working for an estate uh, attorney's practice. Oh, so it's like, go. Hey, once we got to get our wills done, like, why don't we just make her, and, and I don't care. Like, there you go. <laughs> Although you have to be careful. I had an estate attorney tell me that a lot of times they set it up wrong or not very good on the front side because uh -oh. they make all their money on the back side when everybody fights. Oh, so anyways, he, I think he was kind of a, another good little segue. Another little, it's like, it's like, did you so ever anyways, think you'd be on a yeah. podcast talking about uh, your uh, unlikely felon book and then <laughs> yeah, giving <no>. tips <laughs> about watching out for legal theft you know, if you ever get to the point of fighting, hopefully you never do. Yada, I thought yada, I'd yada. be in a spaceship before I would, <laughs> before I would be doing this. <laughs> Damn. Well, I mean, listen, this has been a great show today. I mean, we're already coming to the top of the hour. Um, again, I just I couldn't wait to bring you on. I was like, I always like to, I try and finish the books before I bring authors on. I'm like, dude, I just got to get them on. We're going to wrap no, it up this because it. people That's need, awesome. people need to know these things. Like this is scary. And no, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm not a yeah. fear monger guy. Like I, I mean, hello, former firefighter. I don't care. <laughs> I, go, I go skydiving for fun, for God's sakes. It's exactly. just, you know, I do weird and crazy things, but this is, this people need to watch out. I mean, this is scary things. So like, how would you, what are your top three? I, I don't normally ask people this, but I have to now, like what's your <laughs> top three, like super tips besides what you just said, like, uh, besides reading the book, obviously that's sure, my tip sure. for them, but, yes, but I mean, the if no. you had to sum it up, if you <laughs> no. had to sum up like top three hard hitting yeah. things, um, and then obviously once he's done with those three people, you didn't just, if you just get the book, it, it's all in there, but, yeah, um, boy, if I narrowed it down to three, I would, um, number one would be gratitude. It's have that no matter what's going on in your life, 
find the good things, focus on the good things. If you focus on the negative and the bad, that's what grows. I mean, we hear that all the time on every book and self-development podcast. It's probably cliche, but here's the reality. It probably saved my life was just finding that gratitude. Second thing, and this is why I teach my kids all the time is you can come back from anything, yes. anything. If, if I, if I could survive this, and again, there's people who've been through way worse than me. I mean, God forbid you lose a child or you, I mean, there's just things that are way worse than what I went through. But the reality is if you can come back from whatever it is, and if you just keep working, you can, you can come back. But that's what I tell my kids all the time. I think the third thing is um, it maybe around the word uh, or the feeling of authenticity and love mm. being yourself. I think I, I was pretending to be somebody, I mean, there were bits and pieces of me that were me, but I was losing one, one of my friends said, you know, back in that day, you were so buttoned up. And I was like, what do you mean buttoned up? He said, you just, it was like, we, we didn't get to see the real you. We didn't get to mm. talk to the real you. And, and, and even now it's hard for me. I mean, it's hard for me to say I'm a convicted felon that it's like, ah, I just say it, ah, but it's the reality and it's me and it's okay. And, and I'm okay. Cause I'm still a good person. I'm still living a great life. So those would be the kind of three things. That third one you just said really, actually I got like chills up my arm <laughs> uh, because it rings home to me. And, mm -hmm. and that's part of my issue is like, I was always trying to do more than the way I was raised. I grew up on a farm and, and stuff and my family's had financial troubles ever since. And, mm -hmm. but that's not me, right? That's my, yeah. we all have our own choice and path. And it's, it's not a thing against my family. I love them. Um, it's just that, you know, I have the choice to learn more, grow more, uh, embrace different things uh, to grow and hopefully pass that on to other people in my family. If they choose not to pay attention, that's on them. Uh, it's not my problem. Well, and there's right? But it's like, wouldn't don't be successful. Yeah. But, and, mm -hmm. and part of that is that is that transparency. I truly learned to realize like, wait a minute, don't ever feel guilty about where you came from or what you did. Or like, I literally am now I'm an open book. Uh, I mean, I, I think probably to a fault, like I don't like the, I, I think my wife, Kristen, she's just like, <laughs> I don't need to know all that. And I was like, <laughs> too much I, information. Maybe, too much I was like, you chose to marry me. You're getting it all. And she goes, okay, you can, you can keep that. I don't need to know about that. I don't need to know about that. <laughs> but it's such a freeing yes. place, right? Yeah. Like once yeah. you finally say, dude, once you start embracing, you know, being grateful and gratitude, but also not caring what people think. Exactly. In a positive way. Don't be a, yes. don't be a jerk, but exactly. like in a positive way. Exactly. Like, Oh my God. Okay. This is who I am. This yeah. is how I bring it to the world. This is how I'm growing and bettering myself. That was, oh, I mean, again, I'm only, I'm, I'll be 46 this year, but I, I figured this out a few years ago, but <laughs> reminding myself to keep with that. It's yeah. I, again, money isn't everything, but I now professionally as exactly. my business, everything else, everything keeps getting better. It's very interesting, right? I mean, there's nothing wrong with being wanting to be successful. I, I mean, I still, I do my goals. I do my vision. I do, I, I journal. I, I talk about where I want to go, what I want to do, but the difference is I'm doing it for me now, not because of probably what I thought everybody else thought of yep. it yep. And, and, and cared about it. You know, <laughs> it's like, who cares? I love it. It's up to me. <laughs> That's why I had to expand just a little more on that third point to, to come <laughs> bring the show to a close because it truly did ring home to me. Cause it was like, yes. All right. Will and I are bonding now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, awesome. well, listen, Thank hang you. tight. I want to give you a proper goodbye off the air. Ladies and gentlemen, again, Will Young, a.k.a. W.C. Young, the unlikely felon. Um, if you guys do the whole Amazon thing, I do have a, a banner on the website for louisville.com. When you ever click on that, it takes you to some special groups because I have an influencer page. And every author who's ever come on the show, I put their book in there if it's on there. Um, and then obviously I, I, I put links in the show notes for you all. So in case it's published in multiple domains, uh, and as long as my authors and their marketing teams provide it, it'll all be there, people. You can find them on online. I'll have all that stuff in the show notes for you. Definitely check it out. Like I said, I, I'll be done with it probably by this weekend because I have some travel ahead of me and I read on the planes. So uh, remember, everything he shared with us today is very, very valid and very, very true. Uh, definitely ask questions. Definitely do better planning. Read the book to understand that more. It's definitely triggered some things for me and my own family and my wife and her family. Uh, it's been a very educational process. But those last three points he said, again, the biggest one for me taken away today was, again, own that transparency. Be yourself. Don't be afraid to embrace it and share it. And people will love 
finally get to know the real you and stop being so closed up. All right, people. So again, ladies and gentlemen, we're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. Will helped us do that today. Make sure you're making the right lifestyle choices legally <laughs> and more. <laughs> so ladies and gentlemen, remember you too could live the fuel and we'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you.